Okay, leak code 67, add binary. Um, in this problem, you're given two strings, string A and string B, and you wanna add up those two binary numbers together and return a string. Um, really, the hardest part of this problem is like figuring out like how binary addition really works and how to implement it in code. I feel like a lot of people just forget how it works. So I think the best way to remind ourselves of how it works is to just use paint, like always. So first, let's back away from binary, right? Let's back away from base two and go do something. Uh, let's do an example of a base that we work with every day in our lives, right? So base 10. So when we have a number, like let's say 19, and we're gonna add like, let's say one to it, right? When we represent a number as like base 10, you can kind of roughly think of it, right? Like let's say we have a number of base 10 that's of like of length three, for example. Right, we can think of a number with three spaces where a number can go into each one of these boxes here, right? But the only numbers that can go into each box are zero through nine, right? So it's gonna be the same thing here when we add, and we're gonna have a little box here and here, right? That's gonna take in some kind of value. But when we add here, let's say we see nine plus one is 10, right? But we know we can't put 10 in a box, right? That's a no-no because we know our box can only take in a value of zero to nine. So what we do is we essentially roll over and then take the remainder and put it up here. And then we add up this column here and we just get two and the answer is 20, right? That's just a way of looking at how we add numbers in um, base 10. So now let's move over to base two and do a little bit of review, right? We know that in base two, we can have like one plus zero is just gonna be, you know, one, um, which of course equals zero plus one, right? Because your properties of addition, you know, zero plus zero is gonna be zero. Um, what else do we have? We also know that, right, one plus one, right? We can't have two. Right, what we do actually have though is we have that rollover, right? So instead we have one zero. So those are like our rules for how we add in base two. So let's apply that to this example here. So it's example two in this. And basically, so we have zero plus one, right? Well, that's just one, cool. But then here we have one plus one. Well, we can't put a two here, that's not allowed. So we roll over, put a zero here, and then we carry the one over as a remainder to this next column. But then here we have zero plus zero is zero, but then we have to consider that remainder we have. So right, zero plus zero plus the remainder, well, that's just one, that's allowed. And again, here we have one plus one. Well, that is, again, we roll over to a zero and we have a one going to this column here. And then we add up, we add up this column. So we can imagine these as leading zeros. So zero plus zero is zero, and then a one, so we have one, zero, one, zero, one, which is exactly the answer in example two. Um, to touch on these examples, um, they're really good for a couple of reasons because they kind of give you a hint of what you should be considering when approaching this problem. So example one shows you something here. Example one shows you that A and B may not necessarily be of the same length, right? Um, example two shows you this idea that not only are you gonna have remainders involved, right? When, when you have something like one plus one, but those remainders can exist when you think you're done with a number. So like, if you were to do this incorrectly, you might say, okay, well, if I have some pointers pointing here, right? Cause we're gonna start from the right. So we're gonna add column by column, right? Thinking about a remainder. And eventually we're gonna get here and we're gonna be done. And we might wrongly forget about the remainder that we can have left over here. So remember, we have to check that if a remainder is left over, we should add it on to our string, right? Because we do want to return a string. Just got to keep that in mind. So let's start coding things up. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to say int i is going to equal to a dot size minus one. Int j is going to equal to b dot size minus one, right? This is the idea that we're going to start at the rightmost side of both of these numbers. So we're going to add like we always do, right? Going from all the way from the right all the way to the left. Um, again, we mentioned we have a result that should be a string. So we're gonna say string result. And for now, I'll just initialize it to an empty string. And then we did talk about the idea of a carry existing, and we'll just store that as an integer for now. And you'll see in a second why, that, why that's useful. 
So let's keep that as a zero. So we do this. And then we can have our while loop now. So remember, we're going backwards. So while i is greater than or equal to zero, right? So while there's something to loop through in the a string. But remember, like we saw in example one, a and b can be of different lengths. So we should also consider the case that, well, j can also have something else left over, right? If, if like b is shorter than a, right? We want to go through the longest string no matter what. Um, the other thing we want to consider, and this is a trick, is that we want to talk about this remainder, right? This idea the remainder can be left over. So even though i and j can be both less than zero, right? We can, we can think that we are done. So we can think that we're done here. What we can also say is like, well, or if c, our carry, is also equal to one, right? So if we still have a carry left over, let's keep going and do what we need to do. So we do this. And then in here, pretty much what we're going to do is our goal is to update the carry. And how we're going to do that is we're going to do another check, right? Because uh, we have to do this extra check because we could be in a situation where, uh, like we said earlier, uh, string A can be shorter than string B or vice versa. So we should do our check first. So we'll say, while we still know that I is greater than or equal to zero, um, our carry should be updated, right? So we should say, okay, well, let's add to our carry. We're going to take a of i, but remember, c is an integer, but then a of i is a character. So how do we turn a character to an integer? Well, that's pretty easy. We just subtract the ASCII value of zero. Um, so we do that. And then now, since we just used up the value at the index uh, uh, of a of i, we should decrement i just to update it. And then we will do the same thing for uh, j. So while j is greater than equal to zero, um, do the same exact thing for the carry. So do b of j though this time, minus this, cool. And then, oh yeah, can't forget about this. So this basically allows us to update our carry. So we're gonna go through, like, let's say for example, we are here, right? So let's say we're running through our index is here and we're thinking about this. So our carry is going to start out as zero, but then we get, we see this one. So we up there, our carry gets to be one. Then we see another one. So we up there, our carry gets to be two, right? And then since that just happened, this is kind of where the trick comes in though. So uh, we'll just call this um, append to the results based on our carry. Right, so we we're, we're gonna say this. So we're gonna say that the result, right? We can just append to it like this because it's a string. We're gonna say it's gonna be C or carry modded by two. And I just wanna make sure we know why that's a thing. Because remember, when we were here and we counted that our carry was two, right? And since we know that the carry is two, right? Remember, we had this idea of rolling over to zero. Well, what's two modded by two? Well, that's just equal to zero, right? So we know that we append zero now. So we, we actually want to just append the zero to our value here, right? And then we want to uh, move on with our lives, right? So that's, that's why we need to do this two mod two, right? Because two modded by like, or sorry, like n modded by two will basically allow n to take on these values, zero or one. The only values that we will, because those are the only values that we're allowed to use in binary addition, right? So basically, n's going to either be zero or it's going to be one. So we're either only appending either a zero or we're appending a one, right? Like in, uh, let's say, in this first column, sorry, I'm being a little messy here. But in this first column, if we're doing this, let's say our um, remainder is zero, right? We see a zero, so zero plus zero is zero, and then zero plus one is one. Well, one mod two is just one. So we, act, we just get to put a one here, right? I hope that makes sense. So this is why we do this. But remember, again, it's a little tricky because C is an integer, but result is a string. So we want to append a character to our string. So we need to turn this back from an integer into a character. So how we do that is we just add the ASCII value of uh, zero, the character zero. So we do that. And there's one more step after this. This is also a confusing step for some people. We just used up the, like, we just appended 
a value to our string based on the value of the remainder, right? So we just like, we can think of it as we, we just used up a remainder. So now we want to kind of reset the remainder. So I'm just going to say like reset the remainder, right? And how we reset that is pretty easy. We just do integer division. So we take our uh, integer C, right? So C is going to equal to itself just divided by two. And that's basically going to reset the remainder that we have because the reason we want to do that and actually let me just erase some of this just to make it a little cleaner. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that. So let's get an eraser out. And the reason we want to do this is very, very important. Let's say we make a global variable called C, which is going to be our carry, right? And I just want to say reset the carry actually. So we're going to do this. So let's say C and it starts out as zero, right? And we're going to start out here. Zero, uh, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. So carry gets to be updated to one, right? And we're using our logic to append to here. So what do we get to append to here? Well, C mod two. Well, C mod two is one. One mod two, that's one, right? So one gets to put, get put here. But then we get to here, right? And imagine if we don't reset C. Let's say C gets to stay as one. Well, one plus one is two, one plus, so one plus one is two, right? So we're not here, but then we also have to consider this one here so that it gets turned to three. And now it's time to append, right? When we append though, it's gonna be three mod two, but that's one. That means one's gonna get appended here, but we don't want that, right? We don't, we don't want a one to be appended here. We want it to roll over. So what we have to do every time is we just do integer division, on our carry in order to reset it. So let's go back a couple steps. So let's say we are currently here, right? So our carry is one, right? Because of this. So we append the one. And now what we do is we do one integer division by two, which actually just ends up being zero. So the carry gets reset back to zero now. So this goes to zero. And now that we're here, right? We're here. So one plus zero is one. One plus one is two. And then we have uh, two. A two mod two is zero and then zero gets added here. So that's basically the idea here. It's resetting the carry. Um, again, also appending to the result, we're appending to the end, right? So our answer is actually being written backwards. So we just want to reverse. Um, so we're going to do uh, res.begin and then res.end, do that. And then we're just going to return our results and see if it runs. It should. Cool. Let's do some example test cases. Awesome, it ran, let's submit. And uh, there we go. Um, it's pretty fast. It's supposed to be a leak that's kind of random. And uh, yeah, hope this helped.